good evening once again once again apology for the delay so we just had concluded our board meeting and the super finance board meeting the performance highlight for this half year ended september 31st i would like to present before you our consolidated loan consolidated loan portfolio has shown an increase of 24% year on year and now stands at 79493 crores we have also very uh, uh, highest ever gross gold loan advance in any first year first uh, first half of a year of 84742 was the gross gold loan advances in the first half of this year also gold loan advances to new customers also on record high of 8109 crores for this half year this half year our gold loan portfolio has grown by 5642 crores and the increase in portfolio gold loan portfolio year on year stands at 11016 crores the consolidated profit after tax year on year stands at 2100 for a half year stands at 2140 crores and the stand alone stands at 19000 1966 crores our interest collection has been all time high in any half year at 5447 crores coming to the subsidiaries bellstar microfinance has an increase in portfolio of 53% year on year and now stands at 7874 crores and the increase in loan disbursement is 76% year on year stands at 4294 crores and the increase in profit after tax 284% year on year at 135 crores mutut home finance the increase in loan portfolio is 14% and stands at 1616 crores and the increase in the loan disbursement 164% at 278 crores there is an increase in profit after tax at 9 crores the insurance brokers has shown an in increase in total revenue and stands at 47% 47 crores and the increase in profit after tax now stands at 25 crores for the half year asia asset finance which is a three leg and subsidiary there is an increase in profit after tax 31% quarter on quarter at sri lankan rupees 7.2 crores increase in branch network the branch network now stands at 80 branches we opened 330 uh, 31 new branches by the group in the half year raised 700 crores through the 32nd public issue of secured non convertible debentures which was oversubscribed on the first day of the issue muktut finance limited in terms of gold loan portfolio registered a profit after tax of 1966 crores for the half year as against 1669 crores in the previous half year is an increase of 18% year on wise year the profit after tax for this quarter stood at 991 crores as against 867 crores in q2 of the last financial year it shows an increase of 14% year on year loan assets stood at 69000 crores in the half year as compared to 57230 crores in the last half year registering a growth of 21% year on year during this half year gold loan assets in gold loan assets increased by 5642 crores showing a growth of 9% and during this quarter the gold loan increased by 1478 crores the bellstar uh, and home finance and mutual insurance workers and asia asset finance i have just discussed with you i don't think there is uh, anything more in that to discuss at least uh, we will wait for your uh, clarifications and questions uh, uh this is uman again uh, uh, no uh, you can uh, download the investor presentation from the bsc site i think it's already i can see that uh, it is there uh, and the nsc also it is already uploaded
Okay, uh, I, I think uh, that uh, concludes my initial opening remarks. I, I now leave the floor open for questions and clarifications. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. The first question is in the line of Maro Kadajania from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. So, so this time on a sequential basis, the AUM growth is only 2% QOQ. Uh, so, any comments on outlook for the next few quarters and uh, why it looks a bit subdued compared to banks who have grown their gold loans aggressively? Yeah, this quarter, the growth in gold loan was sub, uh, is 2%, 1, uh, which is 1,478 crores. That's not a, not a, not a bad growth. And uh, the, first, the first half year, the total growth in the first half year is 9% for the half year. Two quarters together, it is 9%. And we have given a guidance of 15% to 20% for the full year. I think we stand by it and we should be able to uh, achieve at the 15 to 20 percent by the year ending. Okay, sir, but did you in the second quarter um, or so far in the third quarter, how do you see competitive intensity from banks? Is it remain more or less similar to the last two quarters or has it increased? No, I don't think there is any increase in uh, competitive intensity. In fact, uh, as I said last time also, some of the competitive intensity or the, uh, what should I say, the, the bank's appetite and uh, enthusiasm for gold has, is not as much as there as we have seen last year. Okay, sir. sir and my last question is on margins. So what would your outlook be? Because uh, margins have declined sequentially in the second quarter. Uh, so where do you see the cost of funds and yields both settle? And uh, what explains the kind of pressure on yields this quarter? See, our, our yield uh, in last year, same quarter, was, uh, or our interest spread was 9.4%. In the uh, quarter four, it was 10%, 10.4%. In quarter one, it is 9.67%. And now it is 9.19%. So we expect to maintain the yield around this uh, this level 9% level is what we should be able to maintain that's the interest spread so there is no pressure on uh, yields etc but then as uh, the book grows definitely uh, the yields cannot the spread cannot go up substantially but we will be able to maintain this 9% to 10% yield going uh, spread going forward also uh, add to, uh, adding to what Edisar has mentioned, uh, you know, uh, uh, you might be knowing that our, you know, our policy is to de-recognize the interest accrual once an account becomes an NPA. So there has been an increase in the NPA. Of course, we had sold a, a certain portion of the portfolio to uh, uh, ARCs, but you know, whatever new NPAs have happened, uh, to that extent, the interest reversals have happened. So this has uh, also, uh, this is also a reason why uh, the uh, yields is slightly lower, uh, otherwise probably it would have been um, more closer to the uh, you know, numbers which we had seen in first quarter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. The next question is from the line of Nishin Chawade from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just curious, uh, you know, on this ARC sale, uh, how much would you have sold and what would be the, uh, you know, financial implication of this transaction? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, the amount, sold, sorry. The, the, the amount of loans sold to the ARC is 700 crores. The main reason <clears throat> for this is Muttut has always maintained a customer-friendly policy with regard to its gold loan customer. So when technically a loan becomes an NPA, maybe 90 days after the due date, it, has, it becomes an NPA in our books. And uh, we, to, to, we have to uh, maintain the NPA rate also. So we have to either auction the gold or the customer is not coming and he's requesting for more time. We are unable to give him that time because 
if they, we give them the time, the NPA will go. So in, in order to reduce the NPA to manageable or reasonable level, we sold the portfolio to the ARC. But in this case also, the customer's gold is not optioned. He gets definitely better time to release the, some more time to release the gold. Otherwise, the option would have been to auction the gold. So as I said earlier, our stated policy is that we would be a more customer-friendly company and try to retain the gold as far as we have come to retain it in the ARC's books. Now, although we had uh, we were given to the ARC 700 crores, as of date, the uh, of the 700 crores, more than 250 crores have already been or for, for, uh, is released. About 250 to 300 is already released as we speak. As in the last one month, one and a half month, this much has already gone. So we were able to support so many customers that definitely we would we feel that it is a big thing, a big support we did to the customer. And all the transactions were done within the regulations and uh, we are well within the regulations in that. So finally, when we look at it, we have been able to help our customers. We have been able to help our customers by not auctioning their goods. I'm sure in the next few months, the most of the 90% or 95 or 100% of these loans, the customers will take back. And then when we look at what we have benefited from it, we have benefited from 80,000 customers whose gold we were not able to, we, were, we did not have to auction. That is the reason for that. And then uh, that has been very much appreciated by our customers. So the transaction was uh, executed uh, you know, perfectly in line with the uh, you know, RBA regulations. So it falls within the you know, fall boundaries of the RBA regulations. Uh, and you know, for us, it was an innovative structure, and probably for the first time we have done uh, the we have done this transaction. So for us also, it was a learning experience. Uh, certainly, the most important thing is uh, you know, supporting the customers, and, and uh, the the uh, the, uh, the other benefit is uh, we could manage the NPS at the same uh, level. Uh, of course, you know, our NPS doesn't uh, translate to a loss, but uh, you know, sometimes we have to provide comfort to some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, you know, people who raises too many questions on uh, you know NPA numbers, so that is the reason why we have done this transaction. But finally, we were able to help 88,000 customers. Yeah. I think that the the people have already benefited. Yeah. Yeah. They have released the gold and they have released the gold. Okay, I, I hope the position is clear. No, no. So, so this, this I think uh, helps actually to understand uh, you know why you did this. But just a very simple point, I think I'm asking is, you know, what is the financial implication? I mean, is it kind of leading to some extras of interest reversal? You know, because you mentioned that somewhere they even got subdued. Uh, out of the 700 crores, how much SRs do you have? Are they included in the, you know, loans and loans under management? I think uh, just, just, you know, basic accounting, which sort of, you know, helps us understand the financial implication of the transaction. Okay. So the interest reversal uh, no, has happened not because we have done an ARC transaction. Interest reversal happens the moment uh, the loan account becomes an NPA. That is, we give the loan for a period of 12 months. Three months uh, from 12 months, that is after 15 months, uh, anyway, the account gets uh, classified as an NPA. So ARC transactions is, uh, uh, no, uh, is done for transfer of NPA assets, not the good accounts. So, uh, no, so since uh, it's already reversed, uh, no, uh, that reversal in any case would have happened. Uh, then the transaction value has happened at uh, par, uh, you know, because it's the first time we were also not, you know, you know everybody, all parties have to be uh, comfortable with the transactions. Uh, no? And, you know, there is a certain um, returns uh, which go to the uh, ARC, but, uh, you know, that is the only expense uh, we incur because it was a 85-15% transaction, 15% is contributed by ARC. So to that extent, uh, ARC gets the benefit. That is the only extra cost. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, for us, it's a very negligible uh, amount. We will get our yield uh, as if it was there in uh, our uh, books. So for the 600 odd crores, and I think 100 crores would be, uh, I guess, the you know ARC, and uh, I guess you have yeah. So yeah. you you would have uh, you know uh, you know the SRS of around 600 odd crores. So. Uh, that is something which is sitting in the loans and the, I mean, sitting in the gold loan book or is it outside the gold loan book? No, so uh, it is under the investments. 
no because uh, as far as we have shown as a investment not under the loan not under the loan book so, so very 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 technically if i add that back maybe your loan group could have been maybe yeah. like that you are right you are right yeah so uh, no if we uh, no so the 1478 crores of uh, gold loan growth is after excluding the rp sale so if we you know gross it up then probably the uh, you know uh, it is 2100 out crores yeah you are right but i am not sure whether it is uh, the you are not doing it in the court you can explain please sure uh, got it this helps just one final question is uh, omen if you could give some outlook in terms of where the borrowing cost we think goes in settle sorry borrowing cost so borrowing cost i think you uh, know we are having around uh, no cost is around 8.46 percentage uh, most of the banks uh, the nclas are around 8.55 8.6 percentage level i think you uh, know uh, we will move towards 8.6 uh, you know after that i don't think there will not be much uh, increase unless the banks also the revises the interest rate perfect this answers all my questions thank you very much and all the best thanks sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congrats on the quarter. Just a clarification on the previous question. This ARC uh, sale happened in October, right? No, September end. September September last. September twenty seventh, I think. Okay, okay. And so, uh, uh, but our NPLs have still not gone down by seven hundred crores. It's down by only about hundred odd crores. So it basically means that there was a further slippage of six uh, hundred crores during the quarter. Yeah, yes, correct. But uh, I think uh, none of these are loan loan losses. Everywhere, actually, we are in the money. No, no, which is fair, which is fair, and uh, just wanted to understand so that two fifty three hundred crores, which has been recovered, um, how has that been recovered finally? The customers come and release the gold. So the customers see that is the entire purpose of doing the ARC sale, right? So if you wanted to reduce the NPA, we should have done the auctions before uh, September thirtieth. Then it would have been a destructive process for the customers. or you know because of the gold price you know uh, we are always in the in the money and if we sell the jewelry customer is going to lose the ornament and of course we will give them the surplus but for him it is a it is a loss of his personal ornament so uh, of course he makes a request also to you uh, know not to auction it because of the collateral value so all these customers 250 custom 250 crore customers or about 20000 customers have come and taken back the gold and they are so happy that they got back the gold And no, I believe the principal and interest. So the gold stays with you in your vaults. Uh, yeah, we are, uh, yes, we yes. we keep it we keep it in the safe custody with us. Yeah, yes. collection arrangement. Collection arrangement is there. Yes. Okay, so you are acting as a servicing agent for the ARC in such a case. Correct. That's a correct thing. Okay, so then just going back to the fundamental question, the customer. when he was npa was not paying you back and then what changed that he suddenly started coming to pay you back just that you've told him that now we've sold your loan to an arc so he comes and pays you back no sir uh, in every in the last year, after 12 months every month so many customers come and pay this for this customers also would have paid in 16 month 17 month even otherwise without doing anything <coughs> So you would have come and paid in 16 months. If it is not an NPA, you would have paid in the 16th and 17th month. Only that has happened now. Nothing else has happened. No, less case. No, one case. No, suppose the customer was expecting the uh, no cash inflow to come in the 16th month, and had we auctioned in no at the end of 15th month, he would have lost the ornament. So we gave him some extra one month time. You know, he could come and take back the ornament after repaying the dues. so that is a benefit which we have passed on to the customers it's not that we have frightened them saying that you have gone into arc etc no so otherwise in normal course you would have taken it in the 16th and 17th that is what has happened sir one of the usp with mathut is always that uh, we we'll talk to customer that it will not be the gold will not be will not get easily auctioned that's the news you we give the maximum time that is the we give the maximum time that is we, why we 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 uh, per customer perception about mathut is that we are a very customer friendly company as regards retaining his gold with us without auctioning it very fast that's it 
compared to other players the complaints are very low because the options are less or uh, they, that is the one complaint that normally against gold loan company your uh, my gold is auctioned off uh, early without asking me or uh, i have asked you sometime you didn't give it that's the major reason for complaint and to and these customers are actually it's a right example 80000 customers and already 24000 customers have taken back the gold if we had auctioned off they would have all ended up with their uh, complaint or they would have have a hard feeling okay no so that i totally agree that uh, it's a customer friendly uh, organization but and this is slightly digressing but now how does the arc then make profit if it is paying you the full value the book value of the loan so they they get the so so you uh, know they, they put 15 percentage on 15 percent they get a uh, higher yield which is actually the cost for us okay okay so they are okay fair enough fair enough Okay, that answers my question. Thank you, and all the very best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is from the line of Kunal Cha from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so sorry once again to touch upon in terms of the right of given that uh, stage three is still more than four odd percent, was this more kind of a one off or we will continue to resort to right of in the coming quarter? Uh, uh, maybe sorry, sale to ARC in the coming quarters as well. We, we can do auctions also. We can uh, maybe persuade customers to come and take it back also. Uh, if it is required, we will do whatever is necessary in that. Okay, so if there is a demand, maybe given four uh, percent stage three, we may continue with sale to ARCs. No, it is it is uh, something a decision which we need to take later. Yeah. As we go forward, we'll have to take the decision. Sir. Okay, and this entire stage two moment which is there, uh, uh, maybe almost from fourteen hundred to seven hundred odd crores. is what uh, uh, was there a forward flow into stage 3 because if, uh, um, because there was increase of 600 odd crores in stage 3 so were there hardly any upgrades coming through in this stage 2 accounts in this quarter what is this uh, upgrade and downgrade sir what is that no no i am saying last quarter stage 2 was 1400 crores now it is down to 700 crores but it seems larger part of it has flown into stage 3 okay because even after uh, uh, selling to arc stage 3 is down only by 100 odd crores so 600 odd crores would have moved from stage 2 so then this stage 2 is not actually getting upgraded to stage 1 but it is more slipping into stage 3 uh, would that be a fair assumption okay, okay. see kunal uh, no uh, two things i just want to know see because there are so many questions around this case 3 even after repeatedly we are saying that no our case 3 doesn't translate loss too many questions you know everybody raises concern sometimes we are also you uh, know worried that you know why uh, you know the uh, the analyst community is asking too much questions on gold loan uh, nps even though even, even though we don't incur a loss so uh you know that is also one of the reasons why we have done this arc transaction now specifically you are asking you know uh, why there is no upgrade you know because our loans are all bullet repayment loan there is no question of upgrade See, okay we, we you know it's not a emi product right so we give the loans for 12 months after 12 months he is he is uh, required to repay the loan now even if he yeah, serves so the gets repaid get, okay so either get repaid or you may sell or maybe it will get recognized yeah so the only option uh, is for him is to repay the uh, principal and interest there is no option of upgrade because it's not a ema product okay okay and uh, uh, one last question in terms of loans uh, uh, this uh, gold pledged okay so that will still exclude the sale to arc amount because you said like it still continues with you uh so uh, gold pledge number will not have this uh, sale to arc or it will still continue to have that uh, sale to arc in terms in terms uh, what we reflect uh, as a gold pledge number that will not have the uh, sale to arc number na correct so the the uh, loan outstanding uh, we, which we have shown in my, our presentation and the balance sheet doesn't include the arc amount of 100 crores it also doesn't uh, no the tonnage also does not include this uh, no uh, okay perfect yeah okay so 183 tons doesn't include this uh, 
Yeah, good evening, sir. Um, sir, I mean, I think you've asked, answered this question a couple of times that, um, I mean, this ARC sale was done to kind of manage the NPAs and the fact that, I mean, you are not at a loss even if there are NPAs. <laughs> Just wanted to understand, uh, so why are these slippages happening? Why is it that customers and, and so many customers not kind of able to repay their gold loan at the end of 12 months, not able to pay them at the end of 15 months, and subsequent to that, they become an NPA. I mean, what is the underlying stress out there which is not allowing customers to kind of pay, pay, repay their principal and interest and take their gold jewelry back? Hello. Uh, this is actually, uh, gold loans are actually a bullet repayment loan. They take a loan thinking that they can get some money in one month, two months, three months. The money, 95%, 96% of the customers uh, take back the gold before 12 months. Only 2-3% of them go beyond one year. This is nothing new. This has been happening for decades. This is what happens in decades. Now, the question is whether <clears throat> we need to be harsh on these customers and auction the gold. Why stress is happening? It is because they are in financial difficulty that they have taken a gold loan. And they have taken, this is not an EMI loan, so he is waiting for a, for, a, uh, for full repayment together, bullet loan. So as and when they get the money back, they will repay. So there is nothing new that today there is some stress is happening. It is a market practice. So if finally he is not able to take it at all, then it will, it will get auctioned. That is all. So there is nothing new this time or any time. They, they have always a cash flow issue. So when the cash flow issue is better, they'll take it back. When the cash flow issue is uh, being extended, extended, etc., the different customers, they may not be able to take back in the time of seven months or 10 months or 12 months. It may go to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 months. That's what happens. There's nothing new here. No, no new, no new. <laughs> So essentially, the cash flow issue that the customers have is much more pronounced today. Uh, this is what they used to be passed because if you just look at the NPA numbers, I mean they are elevated versus what they used to be uh, in the past. So many different customers, so many small, small, fifty thousand loan, twenty thousand loan customers. Uh, so, so nobody. We have, we have around uh, eighty-four lakh loan accounts. You know, fifty-five lakh customers. You know. We don't assess the cash flows of the borrower at the time of uh, uh, at the time of giving a loan. So probably a, a customer is coming and taking the loan for uh, three months. You know, another customer might be coming and expecting a, a cash flow to come in six months. You know, another customer is expecting the cash flow to come in eleventh month. You no, know, another customer might be expecting somewhere around fifteen months, sixteen months. We you know we are offering a standard product of twelve months. You know, because we don't know the cash inflows. The customer is expecting that because his uh, collateral is good, you know, he'll be able to repay when the cash inflow comes. Now, you know, at different points of time, uh, you know, uh, we, we can be flexible to these customers by offering extra time. Uh, it is not a reflection of the stress of the borrower. You know, it is more because you know, we are not aware about when his cash flows are going to happen for repayment. And my final question is again on your yields and spreads. Uh, so first is uh, a data keeping question. If you can just quantify the interest income reversal for this quarter and last quarter so that we can calculate the uh, yields excluding the interest income reversal. And so secondly, uh, the second question again on spreads. So somewhere we kind of uh, acknowledge that uh, banks' enthusiasm for gold loans is not as high as last year and and maybe an inference of this is maybe the competitive intensity is also not high, not as high as last year. But at the same time, somewhere, sir, our yields uh, or our, our spreads are moderating. Uh, I mean, this quarter, I mean, spreads of almost 9.2%, uh, and where we earlier used to be spreads of 10%. Somewhere, I think there is an acknowledgement that I am seeing that spreads could now further decline to 9% as well. 
so uh, of course i uh, know we generally don't uh, 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 give a guidance on the yield no mostly uh, we talk about a return asset no our uh, we always give a guidance of around 4% return asset in the medium term of course we are able to generate a higher return asset in the short term and we continue to focus on that because it's a short term loan because it's a large volume small ticket size loans you know we have to offer uh, you no know, various schemes at different uh, markets at a different uh, rate so you know the yield sometimes can vary uh, you know customers are also becoming more knowledgeable about the interest rates uh, so they also expect a better deal from us uh, we being the largest player we always try to offer a better uh, 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 deal to the customers so uh, we focus more on retaining the customers because of which uh, you know deals uh, are supposed to come gradually uh, over a period of time though in the short term we are continue to generate a higher uh, return assets you know i think this quarter is around 5.8% uh, 5 point something uh, return asset so uh, in the current quarter also you uh, know uh, i think it is more or less in line with the first quarter except for the reversals would happen you are asking also on the interest reversal i think it should be somewhere around 100 or crores interest i don't have the exact number uh, it should be around 100 or crores uh, reversals would happen so uh, that is the presently the thing i think we are will be able to maintain the same uh, levels of yield for some more time uh, you know so that's why we give a medium term uh, roa target of around 4 percentage you know medium term could be you know i think in maybe uh, about you uh, know 5 years you uh, know i think you uh, know that is a minimum level uh, we try to uh, maintain of course uh, currently we have a higher roa levels what is it what is 100 crores this quarter what was the interest rate come reversal in the last quarter i don't have the exact numbers but you uh, know it should be no roughly I... around those levels got it. no problem sir. thank you so much and wish you and your team the very best thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference we request you to limit your questions to one per participant only the next question is from the line of raghav garg from ambit capital please go ahead Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Just uh, wanted to hop on the same question again uh, with respect to the decline in yield. So, one of our larger fears uh, this quarter had uh, seen, uh, you know, stable to increasing yields on a quarter-on-quarter basis. Uh, we are given to understand that this is a product where uh, one can exercise pricing power since it's an emergency loan. Uh, so in that context i wanted to understand uh, whatever you are doing to retain customer probably offering him a lower rate is this uh, more an outcome of uh, the comparative intensity uh, that we are seeing uh, is that what it is uh, and then uh, my follow up question would be uh, where do you see yield going uh, you know uh, from here on at least for the next uh, couple of quarters uh, that's all thank you Uh, so if you look at uh, this first six months you know uh, the disbursements to new customers have been the highest uh, you know in any uh, first half of uh, you know mutu finance history so we are getting uh, a good uh, number of new customers our focus is always on increasing the aem through uh, you know new customer acquisition as well as uh you know you know we you know win back of uh, you know existing customer base who personally do not have a uh, currently don't have a loan account so uh, uh, that is our primary objective you know of course yield comes secondary because we are currently generating a good uh, return to uh, our stakeholders so uh, the focus uh, you know certainly is on you know increasing the area So anyway, uh, to answer your question, our yield will not uh, decline or change substantially. It will remain almost the same, maybe 10, 15 basis points here and there. That's all, nothing more. Uh, would Would you say there is some uh, geographical color to the comparative uh, intensity? Probably south is one where uh, you are witnessing a much higher level of competition, uh, say from regional banks uh, or some of the other uh, players which are smaller than you. Is Is that the case? No, no, no. Okay, and uh, just last question. So your gross loans under management, six seventy-five 
billion uh, that you've reported on 30 uh, page 32 of the presentation uh, that does not include the portfolio uh, sale right of 700 crores yeah it does not include uh, AFC sale yeah okay sure uh, thank you that's all from my side thanks. thank you the next question is from the line of Shabrancha Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. The first one is around uh, what is the quantum of interest reversal? The second is uh, wh what prompted us to do this ARC uh, sale? This is the first of its own kind. Um, and uh, any which ways we are, uh, you know, negotiating with the cl uh, customers to come and get their go uh, gold loans, uh, uh, gold collateral uh, back, uh, which we used to do any which ways uh, using auctions. So why didn't we choose this path of ARC sale and not doing auctions? Uh, uh, what was the thought behind that, and what is the quantum of in interest reversal? Thanks. I think uh, uh, you are not there in the in the earlier. We had explained all this in the earlier uh, earlier uh, discussion. Uh, earlier questions, we are actually fully answered why we did this, etc. Uh, it's available there anyway. You, you, you tell it quickly uh, by uh, during during the ARC transaction, we are able to retain the gold of the customer who has requested not to auction, in, so that he was not able to auction it. We don't need to auction it. Auctioning means the customer loses the gold, his precious ornaments is lost. We are actually giving a very good customer, uh, what should be customer friendly approach for which so many customers are appreciating us. What are the quantum of interest reversal, sir? Uh, I know, uh, I, earlier, I had given this uh, uh, reply. I think it should be around 100 road crores. You know? I don't have the exact numbers. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Mona Ketan from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. So um, I had this question on the yield. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, uh, at, at a previous call, you had indicated that uh, with rise in cost of funds, you will eventually have uh, you know, uh, uh, higher yields as well, or rather you'll pass on some of the um, interest rate hikes to customers. So have we seen anything, and uh, could you give some color to the extent of uh, lending rate hikes, if anything? So there is no substantial uh, hike in the cost. So only when there's a substantial hike, we need to pass it on to customers. So it's only a few basis points hike, which, was, which we, could, we thought we could absorb out of this. Okay, so there is nothing in the pipeline in terms of uh, rise in, because H1 we've seen about 45 days rise in lending rates, uh, sorry, cost of funds. No, I, I think uh, CFO will explain also, you don't see a, a big spike in the lending rate going, uh, and the borrowing cost going forward. Do we almost the same? Maybe small 10, 15 basis points, that's all. Okay, that's all and, <coughs> okay. So just in one of the previous questions, you mentioned that uh, the interest, uh, the decline in, uh, um, you know, the lending yields that you have this quarter, it's not uh, probably because of the interest reversals, uh, because <coughs> uh, the NPA rise did not happen this quarter. So what is uh, resulting in this uh, yield decline for us? Is it the lower uh, rates offered to customers to retain them? So these are all short-term loans we do for uh, the loan period is usually three months. People take back the loan in three months, etc. New loans are given. So small, small interest variations happen. It's not that we are giving a 20-year loan, etc. to customers. It's a very short-term loan and the, uh, the, the loan period which actually uh, the loan exists in our books sometimes is only one month, two months because it is so short. Uh, small variations in the interest will definitely uh, affect the, uh, the overall yield also. That's all small, very, very minor changes. Sure. So your spread guidance now comes down to 9 to 10%. Is the, did I hear that right? 90? The guidance on spread, uh, does that come down to in the range of 9 to 10% versus over 10% earlier? Yeah, yeah, it, was, it is always between 9 to 10 only. 
it is now on the lower side of 9 digit, sometimes it is on the higher side of 9 digit. All right, All right. sir, thank you. thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dhruv Sarab from Maniawar family office. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir, good evening. I uh, just wanted some color on the run rate of disbursals. Uh, so for the last uh, three quarters, what we have seen is in Q4 of FY23 and in Q1 of 24, uh, the average dispersal per quarter was around 50,000 crores plus plus in the gold loan portfolio. And uh, if I were to just back ask it, this quarter we are around 30, 32,000 crores. So can you just uh, shed some light as to what's happened and why is this run rate come down despite gold prices kind of not being stable and where they were? So, uh, you know, if you look at last year, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we had a uh, lower growth uh, because of various reasons in the first quarter. We were focusing on migrating the uh, teaser rate customers. Uh, we also had a little bit of options during the first quarter. Uh, uh, second quarter, uh, you know, we had some challenges because you know, we saw a lot of unhealthy practices by banks which were affecting, uh, you know, uh, uh, our business opportunity. We don't want to elaborate on what banks were doing, uh, you know, and currently doing. Uh, and the third quarter, we again started seeing growth because we lost almost three quarters. You know, we went all out to the market in the fourth quarter. You know, and mm -hmm. you know, we did an aggressive scaling up of the uh, book. We did a lot of uh, you know top ups. Uh, in the first quarter, also we continued that uh, momentum. Uh, this quarter also we uh, uh, did, and we could do about thousand, uh, you know, uh, close to thousand five hundred crores of growth, which is not a bad growth. And you know, uh, that is a, uh, the the uh, the growth path we have followed in probably in the last uh, uh, twelve to eighteen months. Uh, so when you do top up, you know what happens is, you know. Uh, it's actually like a, a rollover of the existing loan. So because of which the advances. Uh, sometimes it will be higher. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mishweta Dattajar for a closing comments. Thank you, Liza. On behalf of Ilara Securities Limited, we thank the management of Mutud Finance to provide us the opportunity to host the earnings call. Thank you, team. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Shada. Thank you, Shada. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ilara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.